welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with my husband again. Yo, what's up? We're gonna be sharing our love story with you guys and how we met. So I think I want you to start off with the first time that you saw me and then all man i wanted to lead up to that part this <laughs> part was like building anticipation but that's but kind of where it started it's though. just gonna start there okay as far as the timeline is concerned yes we like to tell various aspects but okay you're the boss so <laughs> um if you guys have seen my testimony video you know that within a month of hearing the lord he opened up doors and allowed me to move to Tucson. So I packed up a U-Haul. I sold the majority of my things. Uh, we brought our dog. It was my dog at the time, but now it's our dog, which I know you love. <laughs> um, and I left for Tucson. I showed up on a Saturday night. I unpacked some of my things, and I was in church on Sunday morning. Um, just hungry for more of them, guys. So about two weeks after I arrived in Tucson, um, I was in service, and I was watching our announcements. And without question, the most aesthetically stunning woman appeared on the big screen. And she started giving the announcements, telling about the upcoming events at church. And my heart began to beat pretty quickly. And I was just, my mouth, I had to bring up off the floor. And so my jaw was way down there. So I was like, keep it together, Mandrigal. Um, that being said... I saw Brittany for the first time. Now I heard a still small voice, which again, I was right in the midst of cultivating my intimacy, uh, basically starting again. So I didn't really know if it was me or God that I heard, but I heard specifically a voice in my head say, that is gonna be your wife. That is your wife. And I didn't really know how to take it. I'm kind of like, what did I just hear? So I went home after church and I told my mom what I heard. And my mom being a great mother, you know, founded in her faith, very grounded in her faith, um, was like, okay, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, you might need to calm, just, just calm down a little bit. I would continue to press into that, pray into that. And I was like, no, I know what I heard, mom. I definitely heard from God and that's going to be my wife. And I was, and so I did what every other normal person would do. Once you hear from God and you're absolutely confident, again, I'm a new at that time to all of this. So I rushed over to one of our pastors who I was working with um, at our satellite campus, and I kind of inquire about Brittany. And but I don't inquire about her probably for two or three weeks after she was on announcements. By the way, within that time frame. When I saw her that day on announcements, she was never on announcements again. I had never seen her in church. I had never seen her aside from that one time. And I never saw her again for about four or five months after that. But so I inquired about her and I said, do you remember that girl that was on announcements like two or three weeks ago as casually as I possibly could, of course, not wanting, you know, to <laughs> reveal what had been revealed to me in my own opinion. Um, and so I kind of inquired and he was trying to go through his mind out of all the people and da, 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 da. And I was describing her, you know, magnificent green eyes and darker hair. And, and then he finally clicked and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Her name is Brittany. Yeah, bro. Unfortunately, she's pretty taken. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, dude, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, oh no, it's fine. You know, I just, I just thought that she was, you know, Incredibly attractive, looked like someone, you know, that maybe was available. I'm not, and so, you know, I kind of meandered my way out of that conversation. And I remember thinking, I'm like, shoot, I guess that wasn't God. That was just, you know, that was just me, you know, saying like, oh, like that could be your wife. And to be honest, guys, that now all of that during this time period, if you guys recall, I, um, the Lord was really asking me to press into him and to seek him with the passion and the fervor and the time and effort that I had put into being a part of this world. He wanted to put me to take all of that and put that into our relationship, really cultivate that intimacy back with him, that relationship back with our heavenly father. So I put what I heard on the shelf and I continued to be obedient and walk forward with that intimacy and that relationship and being called to singleness for that period. I am so incredibly thankful that I did. And Britt, I think 
you can kind of interject at this point. Yeah. So when Dave moved to Tucson, I didn't really see him much and I didn't really know him. Um, I don't know how long after you moved here that I actually saw him at church, but eventually I did know of him and had seen him around, but I didn't really know him personally. And we never had an introduction until how long um, had you lived here before we uh, like had finally been introduced? Or it would be a year, December, January, February, a year and four months, y'all. A year and four months since I moved, I heard that voice. So that was our first official conversation. So it wasn't really even a conversation. Yeah, that it was like fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah. I. Um, like Dave said, the pastor he had asked said that I was taken. I had dated someone and um, at the time that he was inquiring about me and then it ended and I had been single for a year before Dave and I had been introduced. Mm. Or I guess he introduced himself. Um, <laughs> I thought it was super smooth by the way, so let the record clearly state <laughs> that I was incredibly smooth upon my approach and my execution and regardless of what she may say after this, I want everyone to know that Okay, I'm not going to be hard on him. Trying to put but that we were, card. So we have finally met at a conference, a marriage conference at our church in January? No, February. It was in February, was in February. of last year, so mm -hmm. 2018. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the first time that we ever officially like interacted one-on-one. -on -one. We it, it was interesting because I was having a conversation with the pastor that he is friends with. And Who I first friendship. inquired with about Brittany. Yeah. So him and his wife we're standing there. I was having a conversation with them and Dave had sat with them at the conference and had kind of like walked up with them, I guess you could say. Yes. But it was kind of weird because we were talking and like they didn't introduce him. And so like we had this like maybe five to ten minute conversation with Dave just standing there. <laughs> and I can't, and it's not as Fall because they didn't introduce him. I guess he could have introduced himself in the middle of the conversation. I, in the middle, but you but know. But he waited politely. With decorum and, and propriety to consider, <laughs> I waited my time. And then he came up to me as I'm like walking away and he shook my hand and he introduced himself. And I'll let you say, what did you say to me? So, before I tell exactly what I said to Britt, I just want to preface by saying, you know, again, guys, the Lord had really called me to a period of singleness. And it was absolutely fundamentally necessary that I remain steadfast and seek out my father and wait for his timing. Because I think a lot of times we hear from God and we're like, okay, that's his will. But a lot of times I think we forget that there's his way that accompanies his will. So there are these moments where we hear from God, we know we've heard from God, we've confirmed with other believers, hey, this is what I'm hearing, can you pray about it? They confirm it and affirm it. And then we kind of say, okay, it must be right now. But there I've noticed that his timing is not our timing typically. And he has a very specific reasoning behind us waiting to execute his will, his plan, his way, guys. So I was in this period for about a year and a half where Again, there were multiple times when I had an opportunity to go up and to talk to Brittany, but when I would feel the impulse to go, I would hear Holy Spirit literally pull me back and say, it's not time. It's not time. And that must have happened three or four times. Um, randomly, as we were interacting, when I would see her um, on one day, um, Wednesday nights, yes, I can hardly speak right now. That's okay. Um, so on Wednesday nights, I would see her occasionally, and then I'd feel that impulse. Holy Spirit would hold me back. Now, when I ignored the Lord, which you can very well do because we have free will, it is a gift, sometimes a curse, but um, at times I'm like, no, 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 Lord, I got this. I'm just going to go up really quick and say something. I'd like them to know exactly how you responded to that. <laughs> <laughs> so the year that I 
was single before I actually officially met Dave and he had introduced me. Um, in somewhere in there, maybe midway through, the pastor's wife that he is friends with still um, and had been talking to at the time. Um, so his wife had texted me and just asked me if I was open to dating at the time or where I was at with, with everything. Um, and she had said that there was someone at the specific campus they were pastors over uh, that was interested in me. And <laughs> at the time, I also kind of felt like I wasn't ready. Um, and I was working through uh, a lot personally in my life. So I just really responded honestly. I didn't even ask who it was because I knew in my heart that if it was of God, that whoever it was would wait for me. And um, that's just like the, that was just the Holy Spirit in my heart and kind of what I decided. So anyway, so I didn't ask her who it was and I just told her that, you know, I'm really working through some stuff right now. And so I just kind of left it at that and told her that I really wasn't ready. So over the course of that time, he says that Holy Spirit would stop him from approaching me. Um, and anytime I saw him again, I didn't really know him personally. Um, but I just got this feeling like that I needed to run away if, if I saw No, y'all, okay, let me correct some just really quickly. <laughs> Anytime that she would see me and I'd be ignoring Holy Spirit, I'm like, maybe just a brief interaction, Lord, that's all I'm asking for. I would be on approach and I promise you that we would lock eyes just for a moment and then her eyes would get really big. I and did then, not. And then she my would eyes did not swiftly run the opposite and direction. I, okay. Just Okay. Like, out of here. First of all, running, <laughs> um, I think that's a little bit exaggerated. Swiftly walking. I was, I was very graceful. You always and are. Efficient. <laughs> Rapidly would exit the scene. Let's just, let's call spade a spade. Oh, gosh. Again, so I didn't know who had inquired about me. I also had, didn't know him. I just, whenever I, I ever, if I ever saw him, like... I don't know, like like he said, like those butterflies no, in babe, stomach. let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we would like make eye contact, it's like, you know how if a guy's interested, like they give you the look and he just- What would, look are you talking about, babe? He would totally give me the look and I would run away because I'm like, I'm not ready for that yet. Like, so that was what I would do. <laughs> so either he would listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and just put some brakes on it or I would run away. Yeah, so either Thank way... Thank you, Lord, for that, though, because we weren't ready to meet yet. Like, it's we true. really weren't. It's true, and I think that is such an incredible point about this, is that there is, I believe, an ideal timing to the way that the Lord works, you know? Um, again, we are given the promise that He can turn all things and make them good. He can make everything, again, even a very negative scenario, He can transition into something, you know, that ends up being very positive and beneficial. However, you know, I do believe that there is an ideal will of the Lord that if we continue to press in, that even if we've again heard from him, we say, all right, Lord, what does this look like? How should I enact this? What's the timing here? Because it's really hard. I know that like whenever you've been praying about something, it could be a relationship. It could be so many different things, but I feel like it's so easy whenever that opportunity presents itself to just jump on it and then like take that timing into your own hands because you can see it and it's within yes. your reach. But it doesn't mean that that's just because the Lord reveals something to you doesn't mean that it's his timing for you to grab it as that's soon as so you good. see it. So good. And good. I think that that really, um, in a previous season of mine before I met Dave, that really brought destruction in my life because um, like I said, I was, I was going through some things personally in my life, um, that I had to work through and it was all caused from a situation where I had taken something out of the timing of God. And if it's not God's timing, then that, that, then it's not God. 
So like that thing that the Lord may have showed you or revealed to you, if it's not his timing, then what you're going to experience is not what God has for you. It has to be God's will, but it also has to be his timing. And I, um, that's just so important. And so that being said, we finally have that introduction. Yes. And yes. So again, I know it's taken us like, I don't know, eight or nine minutes to say exactly what I said, but here you go. So I wanted to be like very mysterious. I wanted to build that intrigue. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I wanted to come up real smooth, give a brief introduction to myself, and then fade away. You know? So Which is what he did, but I you know how amazing. you plan something out in your head like five hundred times and it doesn't go how you planned still? I thought it went I thought it was one of the best introductions I've ever had in my entire life. It was smooth. Like, I'll give Come him on. that it was smooth and, like, <laughs> he was there and he was gone. But you know when <laughs> someone, like, if someone introduces themselves, normally they don't just, like, introduce themselves <laughs> and then have, like, a like, very short sentence and then peace out. Like, normally they'll introduce themselves, maybe... Like, show talk, interest, maybe? Yeah, like, talk <laughs> to you for a second. Like, he literally came up. Hi, I'm David Madrigal. I've seen you around. Just wanted to introduce myself. And I'm sure that I'll see and, you around again. Yeah. And boom! Then, boom, he's gone. I'm like... <laughs> I, and then I just sat there. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Mind um, blown, y'all. Oh, so, my So, well, anyway, so I end up telling um, my friend the pastor's wife that I keep referring to in this story, uh, how awkward I thought that Dave was. So, rather than being super smooth, <laughs> I find out that I'm incredibly awkward. <laughs> Shocker. And then, but I, it wasn't so bad to the point where I just kind of crossed him out in my mind. Was it cringeworthy? No. So, we... <laughs> Still have a chance. We, like, would see each other in passing on Sunday at church or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to him a couple of times. And then, um, maybe, like, a month later-ish. I inquired, and I said, okay. Like, so, my interactions have been short and brief. So let's just start very casually texting. If it's awkward via text, the most, in my opinion, the easiest form of communication... It's not happening. So uh, I ended up asking the pastor who's been, again, integral in us meeting along with his wife, end up asking him if they could ask her if it'd be okay if I gave her my number through them. So I ended up doing that and I sent a text. Was it on a Monday? Yeah. I don't even remember what a, day it was. I'm I just sure remember. It was a Monday, I just remember, because it was hard, because like we would briefly see each other at sun on Sunday, but we had no way of contacting each other. That was another thing. We both were off of all social media, so it mm -hmm. wasn't like we could like be like, hey, like he could ask me for my number unless he wanted to wait another week to see me on Sunday, which he mm -hmm. didn't. So um, he inquired, and I gave them permission to give him my phone number, and I think it was on a Sunday that that happened because I remember that it was, I remember it was a Sunday because I remember that I didn't see him at service that day and I was sad because I was waiting all week to see, see him at service <laughs> and then I didn't see him and so I was like, oh, that sucked. Um, but then I remember getting the text that he had asked for my number. So anyway, so he gets my number and he waits yes. a day to text me. So at this point, like I, I had an open mind, um, as it relates to David, but I, again, I didn't really know a lot about him. We had very brief interactions. So it wasn't like I, I was like, oh, I'm going to start dating this person after only having these brief interactions. Like we texted for, um, like a couple of days back and forth and had some phone conversations. And Beautiful we, phone conversations. And we, yeah, we really connected really well. And so he asked me out to lunch on um like the, on, on a wednesday of that week mm -hmm. and so my headspace going into this was okay so i'm getting to know this guy like i didn't in my head think of it as a date i just thought of it as i'm getting to know this person and i'm having lunch with them and um little did i know <laughs> that we would go on that, that lunch time and end up having five other dates 
in that same day, back to back to back. And then by the end of that night, me looking back saying, yep, that was, that was actually not only one date, that was five dates because we just connected on a level that I've never really experienced before. Like if you would have told me that Dave and I would have met and from the day of our first date, get married four months later, I would have called you crazy. And I would have also called you crazy if you would have told that to me. Yeah. So this isn't something that I know a lot of people um, can't necessarily relate to because not everyone has that time frame in their courtship and dating and all of that. Typically yeah. there are people, but you know, everyone's different. Everyone has different experiences. So, and I definitely hadn't really heard of that before. So I would have even said that's crazy, but when you experience it, it's a completely different thing. So, um, and for me, so just to give yeah. you guys a little backstory is that I was working from home, um, invited her out on a Wednesday. Um, and that was at 12 o'clock and I had planned to take her to a park following that lunch if it went really well. Obviously it was incredible. Um, sparks were flying for me because that day that she's talking about, we went from getting something to eat to going to the park and then yeah. we ran over to a movie and then after the movie we had some ice cream and we had these little intervals in between all of this y'all. So what was supposed to be an hour and a half lunch, then we ended up ending the night as just a beautiful end to it. We went to the park in the community that I was living at and I had this incredible encounter with God. And I, I thought that was the next day, baby. Um, it's all just a wonderful <laughs> dream to me. So, but that was really, I think that's when I really got the confirmation, yeah. um, that I'd really like to share. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, whether it was on the same day or the very next day, what should be noted is we did not spend more than 24 hours apart. Um, from that Wednesday through our marriage and then four, three to four months after our marriage. So almost a solid seven months of not spending more than 24 hours apart. So it was every single day and every single day and it still is an absolute dream to be with you. Yeah. Um, but. So we ended up going on a walk and one thing that was really amazing about our relationship is that I think, again, the Lord has just prepared each other, Britt and myself, for each other. Um, he's prepared us in a very unique way because there we, we share a ton of commonalities, obviously, not only spiritually, we share a lot of common interests. We can talk about that in other videos and it's absolutely crucial. Um, Definitely have differences, but oh, yeah. for the most part, like on the important things, yeah. we do agree on a lot. And um, I think that we just, even in our differences, we can really understand and like relate to each other. I don't even like, we can only explain so much like how it felt because yeah. it really felt like a dream. Like I felt like I was literally living out a fairy tale. Like... And it's still incredible, but it's just, it's almost like one of those out of body experiences. Like I kept having to like pinch myself, like, am I, is this real life right now? Like that's what it felt like that whole time, like through planning our wedding and house hunting and actually getting married. And it just, it's just exceeded like all expectations that I've ever had for who I would marry and I remember the Lord telling me before I met Dave to put down my pen and why he said that to me is because I was trying to write my own love story and I was trying to um, be the author myself but God is the only true author and I think that that really um, put things into perspective for me that I was taking everything into my own hands instead of letting him write it. And so once I really surrendered and um, let go of some of the things that I had gone through and that I was working through, like the Lord literally redeemed so much um, in my life that I had seen previously as a lot of pain. And it's just so incredible how the Lord in an instant can change everything because that's what happened. It was like 
it felt like it was like a day and it was it was just like I had a new life and on a new level like I guess I'm I'm hoping that makes sense but no babe and that that makes a lot of sense um, and I think that that is a perfect segue um, into what I really experienced at the park and what that was was one of the most explicit confirmations I've ever had from the Lord in regards to anything that I've ever set out to do in his name, you know, or tried to be obedient in. And we were walking through the park and we really just came to this point where there was a small awning and we stopped to really talk. And it was a very emotional moment because Britt was sharing a lot of what transpired in her life and I was sharing a lot of what transpired in my life. And one of the things about Brittany that I've never encountered with anyone else is an acceptance of not who I was, but seeing me through the eyes of our Father and seeing me for what Jesus is transforming me into and has transformed me into. So she didn't look, even though she had every opportunity to hear my baggage, and I had the same opportunity with her to hear everything that I was, but not everything that I am. She never really focused on that which was before Jesus. She focused on who I am and who I am becoming in Jesus. And I've never had anyone look at me or evaluate me from that lens. And that really was one of the many, many things that I'll talk about that really confirmed to me that this was the one that before the beginning of time, the Lord had ordained and orchestrated for me to meet and to fall in love with and to be with, where two have become one, one unit unified together with Jesus in the center. So I'm bearing my soul, she's bearing her soul, um, and we're crying together because, you know, again, what's coming out of us is love, despite what the world would say, you know, are these negative aspects of that which has transpired in our past. And one of the things that on that night that the Lord just reminded me, thank you God, that's incredible, is that we showed each other our scars and we didn't look at them as something, we didn't see them for the pain that was inflicted during that time, but for rather the fact we viewed them from a perspective by which they were completely healed and we were able to remember the grace of God mm -hmm. that brought us from those moments of pain into these moments of glory together. And Britt really shared that perspective with me and that really blew me away. And I remember I went in for a hug and I hugged Brittany. And guys, I don't know how else to describe it aside, aside from I felt ensconced by God. There, this warm sensation completely came around me and us at this one time, and I've never felt the impact of another human's embrace in this way. And I felt like God completely in, enveloped us in his love in that moment, in, in a tangible way. And guys, I felt a hand on my shoulder as I was holding her. And I heard the Lord whisper to me, and he said, Son, this is what happens when you are obedient and you wait on me. I am in the waiting and this is me and this is my will. Good things come to those who wait on the Lord. And I waited, y'all, for a long time. And I waited 30 years. Actually, it was 29 years at that time to meet the love of my life. And it was so worth the wait. And to feel that reassurance on my shoulder and to hear it articulated to me, it was beyond words, guys. It was beyond words because the Father really affirmed to me that this was of Him and it was a blessing that He had that I only had to persist in with faith. And then once the timing was right, He brought it and manifested it before my very eyes. The Lord is so good. Like, I get into these moments where I, like, don't have words and this is definitely one of them because... God is so good and He takes care of us so well and especially when we actually allow Him to do that instead of taking the reins and, uh, and giving Him the reins in our lives because we do have a free moral will. But when we really put everything that we have in our faith and our trust in Him, He, he is so faithful and, and yes. goes above and beyond anything that, that I could ever imagine. Like that our whole short season of dating before we were engaged before we were married it was it was a dream and it's still so incredible to see the lord working in our marriage and it's our marriage is definitely definitely different than dating and definitely different than being engaged but i still 
I still feel like at times I have to pinch myself because I'm like, this is my husband. And this is my wife. <laughs> what? You, you. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, so from that point on, like, so we had the bunch of first dates on that first day. The second day we hung out, we hung out after I got off work and we went to that park and that happened that night and then it was like we went on a double date on Friday and like or yeah mm -hmm. on Friday yeah, or Saturday somewhere around there. oh I think it was Saturday because Friday was the day that the first the day that David told me that he loved me so I know gas <laughs> like how on earth can and you I possibly said it back. know that um, how on earth can you possibly know that and guys again what Britt said earlier is that I'm trying to articulate the supernatural with yeah. a natural language. Yeah. It doesn't, to many individuals, cynics, skeptics are kind of like, how would you possibly know? Well, let me tell you something. And the Lord just gave this to me. I had known everything that love wasn't at this period in my life due to my own personal action, due to my own free moral will, walking down those shallow relationships, knowing what love wasn't. And I said it in our vows, and I'll say it again. The love that I experience with you, that I experience with my wife, and only my wife, she has redefined what love is, my concept of love. To all of you out there, I'd be like, I know what love is, for sure. Unless, and I'm sorry to say this, but I believe it with everything, that I, with everything within me, that until you are engaged in a relationship, until you are married under a covenant of being a servant to each other and simultaneously engaging in a continual progressive relationship with your heavenly father. Those two things together end up redefining your very conception of love and your definition of love. So what I would articulate previously before I met my wife as to love would sound similar to what the love I'm experiencing now, but every single day I wake up and I love my wife more. So my conception expands and my capacity for it expands. In my definition, she's redefined everything I thought love was. Love is not just a feeling, guys. It is an action and it, again, is incapable of being fully articulated into words. Our love is ineffable and that's really what it is. That's really what it is. And so all that being said is that Brittany has redefined what love is to me, for me, and I get to experience it every day. It's her in combination with my relationship with Jesus that has redefined what love is for me, sincerely. Yeah. And so, long story short, I know this isn't gonna be the shortest video. I think that's just gonna be how our channel is, how my channel is. I blame me! <laughs> well, I don't always help either. But I guess the point that I, one last point that I want to say is that that whole season, so that whole time from meeting him on our first date that I didn't know was the date until the end. The first day, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. Boop. So from that first day up until our wedding day, four months, um, it was so effortless mm. and it felt like we say this very frequently when we're trying to describe what, what it felt like is that we're on a highway of green lights yeah. and it was like even if something like we had a question of okay how we're gonna how are we gonna do this it was like another door would open another door would open mm -hmm. another door would open and something that I didn't mention before is I remember I was on YouTube before I had been introduced to Dave. So I was sitting in my car on my lunch break and I was watching a wedding video and I remember it ending and I remember the Lord telling me to start planning my wedding to which I, to which I responded with kind of a chuckle like, um, Lord, you know I'm single, right? So why on earth would I start planning a wedding right now for myself? Like, um, and I 
I'm like, okay, either I'm <laughs> losing my mind or the Lord's gonna do something crazy. I don't know. So I kind of just left that on the shelf. I'm like, okay. And then I meet Dave and we get married four months later. So. Yeah. And I, babe, that's. That was another yeah. confirmation for me. So how he was talking about all these confirmations, like he had so many different confirmations and so did I. And, and I think that's the Lord really, really just made a way in every area that needed a, an open door. So although our timeline wasn't necessarily what you would most would consider to be traditional, um, even if it may not be traditional, it doesn't mean that it's not God. So I just want to encourage everyone to just really, um, in any and every season, regardless of the topic, leaning on God is what gets you through everything. And um, His ways are not our ways. His, his ways are higher. And I'm so glad that I dropped that pin and let him write my love story instead of trying to do it on my own. Amen. <laughs> well, we will see you guys next time. And thank you again for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.